graph. So, graph GIS is the first free and open source software, GIS software in the world. Mm -hmm. Really, maybe it's the second one because the first one it was called the MOS. It was uh, both of them was developed by US Army, actually. And uh, it's GIS software. Mm -hmm. There is more than 400 modules for analysis, every kind of analysis with vector, raster, databases, and uh, imagery, what uh, usually the JS is done. And uh, there is a lot of interoper interoper interoperability with the other software, uh, usually using uh, GDAL as a uh, library to ex exchange data from graphs to other format but also with uh, uh, other interfaces to connect directly, for example, with R, with uh, WPS software, server software like Zoo or by WPS, and also for uh, imagery like uh, overlay and uh, Paraview. This is to show a little bit what uh, going to speak. Graph has several modules and there are uh, eight classes. The every command starts with uh, this letter. So G is for the general command usually to work with, with maps, rename maps, copy, delete. So for example G rename is to rename maps or G remove is to remove maps. And uh, D is for display. So display raster vector legend Rust is to work with raster data, V is for working with the vector, E with the imagery, R3 for work with the voxel or raster 3D, DB for work with the database, and the PS for possible to create uh, output map. Obviously, this is to run uh, them by console, but uh, there is also a GUI that uh, you don't have to know the common name and you can uh, only click and launch the common. So, a brief story about Gloss uh, 7. We started to be developed in 2008. There was uh, a graphics was released and the trunk version was moved to the 7. And uh, there is very hard work, so it was at least five years, and uh, there is no uh, stable version for Graph 7. But this was because uh, they change, we changed a lot of stuff inside the core, and uh, there was a lot of uh, changes in the libraries, and uh, a lot of new modules, and uh, a lot of other news. So the core developer are not so much in graphs, maybe are seven or eight, and the uh, work are driven by these eight people. Uh, we hope to release the graph seven, a first stable version of graph seven this year, but uh, we have not uh, a fixed plan, so maybe it could be also the next year. Uh, right now you can find the graph seven for uh, the most important uh, system, so uh, for uh, Linux, Windows, and uh, because, and you can test it and report bug. We are really uh, pleasure if someone report bug, and uh, because we are looking for that. So now it's quite stable, but there are uh, especially for Windows and because less tester, and we have to know if there are some problems also in that. brief overview about what we did in the cross seven code. Obviously we drop all the code that are not more necessary in, the, in this version. There was a lot of improvement in the bug fix and the new feature out. You can find the more info in the track system. You can you should find all the changes. There is a page 
where we put all the changes from class 64 to class 7 and also the new uh, feature improvement. Here, uh, later I will publish a uh, presentation if you click on the link page and you click on access to directly to that page. So, the most important dropped code was the old GUI. From uh, class six, uh, class 5.7 there was an uh, interface uh, group, a graphical user interface, was written in uh, TCLTK. And uh, from uh, 7th it was completely removed. There was a new one with, uh, developed by Google Python. And uh, it's not so different, but there are a lot of improvements. And uh, uh, we can also remove uh, dependencies from TCLTK and it's good for, for us. Okay, we remove also a lot of old code in uh, the library. There was also some code uh, coming from uh, 1980 uh, here, so very long and not more uh, necessary. But also uh, old code is continued to use. Uh, for example, Airmap Calc is the uh, common to make uh, map algebra, and uh, the, that common is coming from uh, 85 or 86, and uh, it's really powerful, and we don't need to remove it. Okay, the, a lot of modules was removed or substituted to the new one, and this is some example. And also, an uh, important common was a two digit to digitize uh, to digitalize vector maps were removed because the, now the digitalizer is completely uh, inside the GUI and you don't need to launch that. What if you wanted to script it? Sorry? If you wanted to script the digitizer, would you still uh, be able to? Yeah, you can do with uh, C or Python uh, API. Okay. So you can create it. But also before with the Digit, you cannot do scripting it. Uh, it launched a uh, launch uh, GUI, mm -hmm. you can uh, use it for. Uh, okay. Well, a lot of improvement was in, done in the library. Obviously, there was a speed up of uh, topology and vector with the new topology system. So, if you are using uh, Classics 4 uh, with vector, you have to regui all of your vector, but there is a command to do that, that uh, you can uh, launch it and uh, here we put the vector with the new topology, and also there is support for like uh, larger file support, like in Chita. Uh, the Python low-level script uh, was improved a lot, there is a lot of new function for uh, using it in uh, other modules. Also the uh, Raster the library was really improved because uh, we have a new feature that I will present later and so I need to be fixed it and uh, and now SQLite is the new database system for the vector. You can uh, save all uh, your alphabet alphanumeric part of vector in the SQLite. Before the standard one was uh, DBF but uh, DBF is quite uh, bad because uh, it's not really SQLite support is a no, so good. Usually, so you, you can uh, switch to Postgres or MySQL and SQLite, but now we move to SQLite by default. Especially in Apple? No, it's only for the. Only for the. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because uh, if you want to use the Spatialite, you can use Spatialite. Or, and after you can use Grass using Spatialite, linking the Spot. data or importing that. So a lot of improvement in the modules. Uh, uh, there is a, a problem with uh, the, uh, use the old one with the new one because a lot of uh, uh, option was renamed or the, there are some changes in the option. So are not uh, compliant with the older version. So for, for example, QJS has to do a quite a big work to rename all the scripting called by Sixante or directed by the QGIS plugin because uh, there are a lot of modules that change the name and the option. 
all the script that was in uh, Bash before are uh, now are in Python. So the, the compatibility with Windows and Mac uh, was improved, and also uh, now the modules are faster than before. All the modules for the vector analysis was improved. In graphics four are are there, but uh, there are they have a lot of problem and not all are working well. And uh, again, but maybe it's the most important. Several modules are really faster now. Uh, we are speaking about uh, from four, 10 to 1,000 times faster. For the uh, air cost and work and the air films are maybe 1,000 faster than before. Especially in the large uh, data set. Also a lot of people in the UI. Now there is only with Python uh, version, so we are working on it and not before, so this is the The Envits is a module used for uh, 3D visualization. It's completely working with uh, the with Python. In graphics for we are continue to use the TCLTK version. The vector editor is fully working also in that in, in, uh, in graph seven. And there are new styles. Uh, in 6.4 there is only a style that is not so good. So now we have uh, three different styles for the common interfaces. This is one of the three. And uh, obviously all the TCLTK modules are uh, rewritten re in, uh, in two spikes. About the new feature? The most important, as we told before yesterday with uh, Sandro, there is uh, internal uh, interfaces with QuestJS for support the topology. So you can edit the, the, directly the data stored in QuestJS with GRASS, maintaining the topology level. The, this project was financed by the Trento municipality and uh, we manage uh, it with uh, Martin Lander. Another really important stuff is temporal GIS. We are now a lot of new modules that are not uh, shown before in the command uh, menu. The name is T dot something. And uh, they can uh, work with uh, temporal data, temporal series data. And this is another thing. From my point of view, because I'm quite a developer, very important uh, news. We have uh, a high level interface in Python, so now we, you can create vector, raster, and uh, uh, work with the region directly with Python and not calling uh, other module. This was financed by Google Summer of Code of uh, last year, 2012, and uh, we are continuing to improve it. Now we, are, we have quite uh, a stable version of uh, the high-level uh, Python uh, interfaces. Uh, it supports support raster, vector in uh, completely, and uh, also the region. And uh, we are working call in a faster way also the model, without using the low-level interfaces. And this is the last, the last important uh, news. We have a WPS interfaces, so now you can call each module uh, inside GRASS and they can return the WPS uh, standard description and you can use it for example in PyWPS or in a Zoo project to create uh, a, a, a web processes using GRASS. For the module, there are okay, 35 or more uh, new commands for use of the temporal library. There is a full output JS to use the, uh, the topology level for JS, and obviously a lot of 
module for Raspberry Pi like, uh, actually. Especially for uh, the module, there are a lot of new models that the Elastic Store are uh, in the add-ons plugin, like Paris, now are moved inside the core of Paris. For the GUI, there are some new very funny thing. For example, the map swipe. You can load two maps of the same app <coughs> and move a slider and see more of one or the other one. It's very important to uh, work with the imagery, of, for example, of a disaster. This should be uh, <coughs> in uh, Indonesia where there is a, a flood and we can move and see what is changing. There is animation, you can uh, use animation from uh, uh, NVIT and create animation of 3D data or for time series. And also a, a module to make uh, uh, iClass is a, a classification of imagery, sub super supervised classification of uh, imagery. So you can uh, select some uh, pixels and say these are uh, agricultural field, these are uh, uh, forest and these are city and after you can create uh, some classification, automatic macro classification. So the conclusion now, we are seven is working and uh, we are using it in the production environment because uh, to work with the vector are really faster. And, uh, but they need more testing for sure because uh, a lot of commands are not very used from everybody and uh, we are looking for testing all the modules and after uh, report the pattern is fine. Uh, with Python interfaces it's really simpler to work uh, with uh, the module and you can develop your module uh, in a simple way. And the GUI is increasing with its functionality and uh, it simplifies the user use because uh, it's quite common to say that grass is quite difficult to, to uh, learn. Now with uh, this new GUI, it should be simpler for the user. So if you are going to try it, please report any bug that you find. And uh, if you like some improvement, you can ask now because uh, uh, it's the, time, the right time. In uh, maybe two or three months, we are uh, we could release some uh, releases candidate or something similar, and the uh, new feature are not included in the first release. Thanks a lot. If you have any question. Uh, what are the main the main feature uh, that uh, distinguish gas uh, from quantum uh, gis? Okay, uh, quantum gis is a, a user friendly JS desktop. Until uh, maybe one year or two years ago, it has uh, very few functionality to uh, make analysis. It was more for public data or uh, yeah, public and print maps. Now with the Sexante, uh, more or less they have the same functionality. Uh, for my point of view, that I'm using GAS uh, daily, it's uh, faster for the uh, big analysis so if you have to scripting it, it's uh, really simple. If you have to uh, repeat uh, same analysis a lot of time, you have to create. You can create a script and uh, launch it uh, what time you want. It's faster because you have not to call uh, some uh, other module between Grass and QJS, for example. And uh, there are some feature that uh, QGIS don't have because, uh, for example, there are some modules that need a uh, graphical user interfaces and QGIS don't have it. For example, all the modules called 
R.Li for the landscape analysis are not uh, possible to use in the uh, QGIS because you need to create uh, a, a file using a, a GUI. QGIS don't test that GUI, so you have to work with us. And uh, for, for example, for uh, connect WPS service from uh, Piper WPS or Zoom, you have to use GRASS. Now, GRASS could be used like library using the example. So, what depends on what you need. If you need to work with a lot of data, maybe it's faster with a simpler with GRASS. For example, we have a very big data set of managed data. We are uh, analyzing and uh, reconstruction, make the reconstruction of each uh, <coughs> for uh, European scale. And I think that with uh, QGIS could be impossible because we are speaking about uh, several uh, billion of pixels. 